So as it says up there, my name is Dan Wellen. I head up uh, OpenStack product and strategy at VMware. I uh, came to VMware through the Nicira acquisition. So uh, my background's in networking, but as a result of the Nicira stuff, I was actually, I've been at every OpenStack summit since the Austin one. So it's always fun to see these, the new summits as they get bigger and bigger and bigger and the, the keynotes get fancier and fancier and fancier and suddenly you've got these badass cars in the keynote. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun to see how this has grown over time. Um, what I'll be talking about today is uh, just a general overview of OpenStack and VMware. And uh, you know, we won't get into the nitty gritty technical details. We had some sessions yesterday that, that did that and I'll, I'll tell you what those were so you can watch them online if you want. But um, we'll cover kind of <coughs> high level way VMware looks at, at OpenStack, what we're doing around OpenStack, how different VMware technologies fit into OpenStack. We'll do some quick video demos at the end to give you, give you an idea and then we're uh, happy to follow up with you in more detail. So um, if you're a VMware customer and you've ever talked to a VMware sales guy, you've probably seen this slide, so I won't spend much time on it. But you know, VMware as a company is focused on delivering IT outcomes um, in a way that gives you, you know, CapEx reductions, OpEx reductions, gives you good security, gives you good availability for your applications, and lets you improve your business agility. And obviously OpenStack is typically more focused on the bottom end of that market. It's about giving APIs, giving you tools to let your development teams move faster, automate the provisioning of your IT applications. But in an OpenStack cloud, it's important to kind of keep the big picture and remember that, that you know, OpenStack, unless you're achieving all of these things, um, likely, likely doesn't really deliver on your full goals. So, um, you know, VMware, our philosophy around how to, how to achieve this is to build something we call the Software Defined Data Center. Right, which is just a hardware or a, you know, a software abstraction layer that can go on top of any hardware across compute, network, and storage to virtualize those resources and let you automate and consume that infrastructure. And you know, traditionally, VMware is, is well known for its, its industry leadership in terms of these traditional scale-up applications, things that need um, high availability, uh, disaster recovery, um, really good SLA, strong security, et cetera. But, you know, in the past couple of years, we've really started also investing heavily in kind of this next gen or third platform application space. Um, and typically the requirements there that, you know, they expand because it's not just about you manually provisioning an application once and having it never go down and maybe upgrading it once a year. Suddenly there's people talking about dynamically expanding their applications and doing continuous integration and moving them up and down. And you really are talking about a world of these more modern applications where people want to programmatically talk to the infrastructure. And when you programmatically talk to the infrastructure, that's where these APIs are very important, these APIs and frameworks. How do the developers, the people building and deploying these applications want to think and model that infrastructure? So there's all types of new frameworks um, for how to do this. There's you know, Spring and Hadoop uh, for certain types of applications. There's Cloud Foundry if you're looking for something that's more at a higher level paths. And there's OpenStack if you're looking for infrastructure as a service. And you've probably even heard now about things like Docker and Kubernetes, right? Um, again, if you want that model of interacting with the infrastructure, VMware is, is, is you know, working to make sure that all of these systems run well on top of VMware software-defined data center infrastructure. And our basic philosophy around that is, is threefold. So first off, you'll notice that a lot, in fact, most of these uh, developer-oriented frameworks are open source, or at least open standards. You know, some of them, like Cloud Foundry or Spring, are things that VMware created and open sourced. Others, like OpenStack, Docker, and Kubernetes, are things other people created and open sourced and we recognize as good ideas and decided to leverage and make sure they run well on our platforms. But in general, because these are developer frameworks, people want to know that they're using a framework that isn't tying them into a particular underlying vendor. And so typically, these are open source or at least open standards. So VMware's philosophy around this is threefold. So first off, we contribute to the open effort. We'll talk about in more detail later how we're contributing to OpenStack. We then basically integrate our technologies in a very deep way such that the differentiation VMware provides across compute, network storage, and management is something you can realize when you're running OpenStack or Hadoop or Cloud Foundry or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, we have to be able to convince you that there's value in running OpenStack on top of VMware versus OpenStack on something else. And then thirdly, we work to enable. We try to make it easy for our customers to be able to leverage these new kind of developer-oriented platforms on top of VMware infrastructure. So often what that means is packaging, uh, either working with partners 
or building our own solutions that incorporate these, make them easy to deploy on VMware infrastructure, integrating them with VMware management tools, et cetera. Okay, so that's the last kind of 10,000 foot slide. Um, first off, I just want to give a little background in terms of how we think about OpenStack. So, you know, our view of OpenStack is it's a framework uh, for providing developers with these cloud style or Amazon APIs on top of their choice of underlying infrastructure. So effectively, what you have is you have a team who's developing one of these new cloud applications and they need access to resources because that's what their application consumes. But they don't want to have to worry about the individual details of, oh, this is a VMware hypervisor, or this is HP hardware, or anything like that. So what you want to do is you want to abstract those resources using you know, it, you know, good cloudy abstractions and let them automate against them. So they can build their own code, they can write scripts against the APIs, they can build their own tools against APIs, they can use third-party tools. But the thing that's in common is that they're using these programmatic calls to talk to the infrastructure. They're saying, provision my workload, scale my workload up, scale it down, right? redeploy my workload with a new version. Again, it's all about this programmatic access to the infrastructure. And so if you look at where we've seen customers be successful with OpenStack, it tends to be in these types of applications. You know, could you technically run a traditional IT application on OpenStack? Quite likely, but the point is, is there, is there all that much value to it? Well, Often, if, you know, if it's an application you deploy once and never touch again, the fact that you have programmatic APIs to control it isn't all that interesting. But in cases like this, we have a scale-out web application or build, dev, test, continuous integration. Right? The ability to have this dynamic way of interacting with the infrastructure is fundamental to the application. And that's really where OpenStack provides kind of, you know, a whole new set of opportunities for how you build applications. Another area we've seen a lot of interest in OpenStack with our customers is around things like analytics or batch workloads. Again, data comes in, you spin up a bunch of jobs, you know, they process the data, they dump it somewhere, they're done. It's this very dynamic environment. And so that's really where we see the vast majority of, of, of our customer interest in OpenStack. Again, focused around programmatic consumption of the infrastructure. And so, you know, when you're thinking about OpenStack, how does it relate to different technologies, whether they're VMware technologies or someone else's technologies? Well, you really end up having a full stack when you end up delivering an application on top of OpenStack. You kind of have the application management and automation layer above. This is where your application team is building, building their own code, writing scripts, using heat, using some other third-party tool to define and run and revise their application. OpenStack provides a set of tools, provides SDKs, a CLI, a GUI if you're not actually automating, all built on top of a standard set of APIs. See what I told you about my hands? So I, I come in and out of the microphone. <laughs> it's hopeless. Um, uh, so, and then, you know, these standard APIs, they layer on top of infrastructure. And OpenStack, as we mentioned earlier, gives you a choice of that infrastructure. So you, it's really important to understand these two different personas. There's the application DevOps team, right, who is worried about building, deploying this application. And they need to, we want to give them standard OpenStack APIs and standard <laughs> tools so they're decoupled from the underlying infrastructure. And then the people running the infrastructure, the cloud operators, they need to worry about, well, what virtualization technology, what hardware technology, what set of operations and tools and management do I need to effectively run this cloud so that it meets the requirements of my application developers. And so as we go through the talk, we'll talk um, consistently about cloud application developers and cloud infrastructure operators. And it's important to keep those two personas in mind. And obviously VMware has technologies that fit in here. This, this will be a slide that shows all of our technologies and where they fit in, but obviously depending on your cloud, you can choose to consume them as components. So we've integrated vSphere Compute into Nova for the Compute API. We've integrated NSX for networking into the Neutron API. We've done integrations with Cinder and Glance for storage and image APIs so that any storage you use that works with vSphere already will automatically work with OpenStack and vSphere. No changes required, no requirement from that vendor to have done a specific OpenStack Cinder driver. And of course, it also means VMware's virtual SAN technology just works out of the box as well because that, just like all of our storage partners, uses the same set of underlying storage APIs. On the infrastructure and operations side, we have tools like vRealize Operations, Log Insight, and IT Business Management 
We'll go into more detail later exactly what problems those tools solve. And then at a higher layer, obviously your application development teams can write their own tools, they can get third-party tools, but there's also VMware tools that are OpenStack compatible if you choose to use them. So there's vRealize Automation, which gives you higher level application management tools, policy, governance, all of that. There's things like Pivotal Cloud Foundry that you can deploy on top if you want to expose a PaaS layer to, um, to your developers. And lastly, so I apologize all of you who have taken pictures of the incremental build. I should have told you which the last slide will be. <laughs> um, you, know, you, you can get OpenStack, you, know, you can do it yourself, you can get it from a third party vendor, but at VMworld, VMware announced that we'll also offer our own distribution of OpenStack called VMware Integrated OpenStack. For those of you that are looking just for kind of a very simple, easy route to running OpenStack on VMware. And we'll talk a lot more about that at the end of this presentation. So again, one of the key points I want to make very clear here is that going back to those two roles, people often ask, well, would I use the vCenter GUI for OpenStack or would I just use the OpenStack API? And the answer is that your cloud developers, right, they're above the OpenStack API. They need abstract and, and generic tools that aren't tied to the infrastructure. They would use things like OpenStack API, CLIs, and tools to provision and manage their workloads. It's the cloud operator. Right, the person running the underlying infrastructure, the person troubleshooting, adding new capacity, upgrading, et cetera, they get to continue to use those familiar and very uh, robust VMware management tools uh, that they already know and understand, and, and they can leverage those to run the cloud. So that's kind of where you get to the really core value we see when our customers are using OpenStack, is that their developers want these new cloudy kind of Amazon-like APIs that OpenStack gives them. They want to be able to build their apps with that type of a model. But you have IT infrastructure people who know and know the power of the VMware platform, are very familiar with the tools, and want the capabilities it provides to let them run high-quality infrastructure. And if you take those two together, what you get is a very powerful combination. You can enable your developers with OpenStack very quickly because your infrastructure operators aren't being forced to learn new tools across compute network storage and management. They can use the tools they're familiar with um, to deliver a production-grade OpenStack cloud very easily. So for the rest of the talk, we'll kind of use those, those three areas that I called out earlier to deep dive in a little more. How VMware contributes and is a major contributor to the OpenStack uh, open source project. How we differentiate. And obviously, we won't have time to get into the nitty-gritty details of every little feature um, and, and how it works in OpenStack. But at a high level, why is vSphere a great hypervisor in OpenStack? Why is NSX a great networking solution for OpenStack? And then finally, we'll talk about how we enable it, the different options we're giving our customers to leverage and run OpenStack on VMware. So first off, contribute. So as I mentioned, that the history of, of VMware's involvement in OpenStack actually goes back um, quite a long way, because it was the NYSERA team who was later acquired by VMware, and that, that, that's where I came from. Um, who we created the Open vSwitch project back in 2009. OpenStack was founded in 2010. And as I mentioned, we were part of that from the very beginning. Um, and as part of our work on Open vSwitch and with OpenStack, we actually uh, created and led the uh, OpenStack, what, what was used to be Quantum back when I was the PTL, and is now called Neutron Project. And so we've led that, and we continue to be a major contributor in that project. In 2012, uh, NYSERA joined the VMware family, and as a result of that, VMware joined the OpenStack Foundation as a gold member. And as part of that, you know, at that time, I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of people who are pretty skeptical about what VMware was going to do with respect to OpenStack. Um, it's kind of funny to go back and read those articles now. People were saying that we were going to undermine OpenStack and all this stuff. And, uh, but you know, what we did is we said we, we, we committed to saying not only are we going to have the NYSERA contributions continue, but we're going to expand and integrate all of our technologies into OpenStack. And if you look at what we've done over the past two years, that's exactly what we did. <coughs> Starting in 2013, we integrated vSphere into the Nova Compute Project. We integrated vSphere storage APIs with our storage ecosystem into the Cinder Project. We also started partnering with key members of the OpenStack ecosystem who were starting to have customers that said, oh, we have customers who want to run OpenStack on vSphere and OpenStack with NSX. Work with us, validate our OpenStack distributions with your VMware technology components. So in 2012, we announced partner, or sorry, 2013, we announced partnerships with Canonical and Marantis. Um, 
Every year we continue to get involved in more and more projects. We've done glance integration, we've done solometer integration. We're even starting a new project with other members of the OpenStack community called Congress, which is about um, creating and, and enforcing policies across projects. For example, if you have certain business rules that you want to make sure are enforced, um, for example, um, you know, workloads with this, you know, only workloads with this uh, security validated base operating system are allowed to be exposed directly to the internet. Those types of things. Um, Congress can do that. And we've also continued to expand our partnerships. We partner now with SUSE and Red Hat and HP. Again, all these people are seeing customers who want to run OpenStack on vSphere and OpenStack on NSX and these partnerships help enable that. And then at VMworld this year, we announced VMware integrated OpenStack which is kind of a, a well-integrated uh, VMware offering uh, that, that gives our customers another option in terms of how they want to consume OpenStack. And we'll talk in more detail about that later. Um, here are some numbers. I mean, the individual numbers, and these change every release. Um, in, the, in the Juno release, we're the sixth largest contributor to, to core projects. Um, we're, we're always in about that ballpark. Um, this is just, I, you know, the, the individual numbers don't matter. It's more that we just want to let people know that VMware is deeply engaged in the OpenStack community, reviewing code, contributing code, submitting blueprints, um, helping make sure that OpenStack is, is, is a great platform for everyone to have kind of a generic set of cloud-aware uh, tooling to build their applications. So moving on to the second area um, around how VMware integrates its technologies to try to have a, have a good story about how OpenStack runs best on VMware. The, one of the important things, and typically the, the discussion we always try to have with our customers is, is to say, well, what are all the ways in which the technology you choose um, affects your ability to successfully run a production cloud at scale with, with good lowest total cost of ownership? You know, how are you going to troubleshoot? How are you going to secure it? Um, what type of availability do your applications need? Does the application really do not care if someone just kills it and spins it up somewhere else? Or do those applications need high availability? Um, and th these are the discussions. The answers from every customer are different. But this is always where we start out the discussion because um, too often people don't think about kind of the big picture when they're, when they're starting out their initiative. And they kind of can paint themselves into a corner if they're not thinking about all the things they'll need to successfully run an OpenStack cloud. <coughs> So obviously, you know, or across the core compute, network, and storage, um, you know, I could talk, and, and some of you have seen me probably talk an hour on each one of these, <laughs> so I'll try, to, I'll try to cover them pretty quickly. Um, around vSphere compute, uh, we've integrated that into Nova. You know, vSphere is the industry standard hypervisor um, for, for, you know, reliability, performance, uh, security, has a great track record, very battle-hardened. Also has a set of very rich features, things like vMotion, DRS, high availability, really good isolation, uh, resource protections to prevent noisy neighbors, um, low latency capabilities um, for if you have apps that, don't, that, that are very sensitive to jitter. The list goes on and on and on. Um, probably the most common question we get about our integration is around things like high availability, vMotion, DRS. To, you know, people are saying, if I use OpenStack with VMware, I still get those, right? And the answer is yes. We've been very careful in terms of how we integrate with Nova to preserve those capabilities. The last thing to mention about vSphere that's very important is all of the additional management tools we have in order to make it easy to add capacity and troubleshoot and get alerts and logging and this and that. There's been years and years and years of that built into the platform. And when it comes to actually running and operationalizing an OpenStack cloud, that's very important. Um, on the NSX side for Neutron, um, I think there's, there's been a long history of, of NSX, which used to be the nicer MVP platform, um, and its involvement in OpenStack. It's been battle-hardened. Again, it's been in production in, in, in customers as large as you know, Rackspace and eBay for over two years now. In fact, God, probably close to three now. Um, you know, it provides a very rich feature set in terms of multi-tenancy and firewalling and segmentation. It uh, works across multiple hypervisors. It works across ESX, KVM, Zen Server. has very advanced network services like load balancing, um, VPN, et cetera. And we, act, and we work very closely with all of our ecosystem partners. We have a great, great set of NSX ecosystem partners so that if you want a firewall, or so if you want a load balancer from F5, if you want to integrate some workloads that are on physical Arista switches, we can work with those 
and tie those all together into a single set of logical networking fabric that let you dynamically consume networks um, without having to talk to your networking team to say, oh, I need another new VLAN for this application, that application. Right? It's all virtualized. It's all pulled up. So it's not just that you can provision VMs on demand, you can provision networks on demand as well. On the storage side, for Cinder and Glance, right, as I mentioned earlier, any storage that works with vSphere will work with OpenStack and vSphere. This includes the ability to do uh, all the array acceleration that vendors have done with, with the vSphere platform to date. It includes the ability to use storage policies, so you can really easily create different tiers of storage. My high, high I.O. storage, my cheap storage, my storage that's backed up 30 days, my storage that's backed up two days. You know, we have customers who have all kinds of very rich storage requirements, and it makes it very easy to map those to um, different Cinder volumes or different Nova instance types that, that then map to different storage. And then VMware has something called Virtual SAN, which is our way of taking commodity disks and flash in the servers and, um, and uh, creating a, a, what's effectively shared storage out of that. Um, and so if, if you're interested in that, you can check out this link, which is a, a performance study that we had a third party do against comparing to Red Hat storage and showing that actually VMware storage was both more performant and was able to be cheaper because the storage was actually converged on the hypervisor versus requiring dedicated storage appliances. Yeah, so, so th th that's a good question. The thing is, in a cloud abstraction, the tenant shouldn't have to think about vMotioning their host, right? Their VM should just have an SLA, like it doesn't go down, <laughs> right? So the vMotion in this case would be more done by a back-end operator, for example, if the operator was taking that host out of commission or doing maintenance on it. So it's a good question. You start it within the, within the, the actual vSphere client it's an operator action. So I don't know if any of you have seen this blog. I would highly suggest you check it out. The link's down below. But you know, it also talks about, beyond the kind of core compute network storage, what are all the problems you need to solve when building an OpenStack cloud? Because it's more than, much more than just the core OpenStack services you need to deliver. And all these, if you, if you don't have solutions that take care of them, it'll, it'll end up sucking up a lot of your time. So you know. VMware has two major advantages in this point. First, as I mentioned, you get to leverage all of your existing um, you know, build-outs in terms of how you build infrastructure, your team's existing experience, and your team's existing tools. In fact, I was having a customer discussion just on Monday. I had a great example of this. You know, they were talking about how they use HP hardware, and HP's already integrated uh, you know, its own plugin into vSphere such that when you roll in another rack of HP hardware, it just automatically gets created as a, as a new cluster it, um, you know, if you ever have to do upgrades on it for hardware, for BIOS flashes or anything like that, you, it just automatically goes host by host by host, shuts them down, vMotions the VM off. So just all of those existing rich tool sets and, and experience that your team has can really help get around a lot of those operational problems you would have um, if you otherwise kind of started, started net new on a, on a new platform. So this is something that can really help you get OpenStack to production grade very fast by building on your team's existing capabilities, the performance validation they've done, the troubleshooting tools they've built, et cetera. The other thing is there's also a set of cloud management tools we have. Um, there's a new, new branding name called vRealize uh, that, that, that all of these tools use. I'm not a marketing person, so I won't tell you what I think about that. But um, <laughs> there's a tool called vRealize Operations, which is for troubleshooting and capacity planning um, monitoring, et cetera. And what we've done with each one of these tools is we've kind of added OpenStack awareness to them. So for example, vRealize operations will not just monitor your v traditional VMware infrastructure, it'll also monitor your OpenStack control plane and tell you that, oh, you have a problem, your Nova API server is down. Or, you know, hey, your Nova scheduler is running at a very high CPU rate for a long time. Something's probably wrong, you should look there. Um, and it also helps with troubleshooting. For example, I can we can, you can pull up a view where you directly l see the links between OpenStack entities like Cinder Volumes, the data stores they're on in VMware, and the underlying physical hardware that that corresponds to. So it really enables very, very rich tools for troubleshooting. 
Log Insight is a tool similar to Splunk for log collection, analysis, search, and alerts. And again, we've built OpenStack awareness into that. So there are management packs not only to help you manage your VMware infrastructure, there's actually pre-built integration to, to process OpenStack logs, collect um, common problems like common errors out of there, create charts and graphs for you to use to, again, make it very easy for you to operationalize an OpenStack environment. And then finally, um, there's uh, IT business management, which um, is, provides you cost visibility. It models what the cost to deliver certain cloud services are and then helps you view who's, who's using them and do show back and charge back if that's something you need. And we've, we have a way that that actually integrates with Keystone so you can see on a per OpenStack tenant basis um, how much resources they're using and how much that's costing you. Finally, enable. This is about how do we make, how do we give our customers options in terms of how they want to consume OpenStack. So, you know, our goal uh, with, with OpenStack, you know, we talked earlier about all the different partners uh, that we have. And you can choose um, to bound, download the open source bit yourself. You can choose to work with a third party distro. And now VMware is giving you kind of a third option, which is this VMware integrated OpenStack. And the goal with VMware integrated OpenStack is to make it very easy and very fast to get to a production grade OpenStack environment on VMware. So this isn't the tool for, any, for everyone. But if your goal is to say, what's the easiest way for me to enable OpenStack APIs and tools for my developers on top of VMware infrastructure, this is a great place to start. So as I mentioned, we continue to work with all of our ecosystem partners. And here's a list here. If you want to go take their third party distros, um, and, and integrate vSphere and or NSX into them, you know, what, well, how it works is that these companies support the OpenStack layers and VMware supports the underlying components. Um, the real difference with something like VMware integrated OpenStack is that it's, it's kind of a more tightly coupled but therefore um, kind of single, single point of contact solution. So you can start with your existing vSphere environment. You add VMware integrated OpenStack which is a validated reference architecture for OpenStack. And we've given you tools to, to automate the deployment of this entire scale out HA OpenStack control plane as VMs into an OpenStack cluster. Or sorry, into a VMware cluster. And you can see here that there's, there's actually tools integrated directly in the vSphere clients to do this, to solve that for install, to solve it for upgrade. And so it makes it very simple to deploy OpenStack, which is kind of step one. But we also have all of these tools that I talked about earlier and all pre-built integrations in order to give you really the tools to continue to operate that environment um, at production at enterprise grade. And so we wrap this all and we test all of these components together to make sure that all the versions work together and everything's compatible. And we provide you a single support contact. Because the reality is often if you boot a VM and there's a problem, it's very hard for you as an end user to know. Is the problem in OpenStack or is the problem in the underlying hypervisor? the problem in how the underlying, you know, OpenStack's talking to the underlying hypervisor. It's very difficult to know that until you've actually gotten to the bottom of the problem. So for a lot of people having this single support contact uh, for any problem in the stack is, is can be very valuable. So uh, with that, I'm going to actually pull up just a quick, really quick demo of, uh, let me see. So we actually had a full 40-minute session yesterday, a uh, deep dive technical demo, and that's all recorded. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you that session later if you really want to get the details. This is just a quick minute and a half kind of overview that I'll, that I'll just talk to quickly. So to do VMware integrated OpenStack, you just get a single OVA, and you download and you deploy it to your vSphere cluster. And you can see in the upper right, you see that VMware integrated OpenStack icon pops up then. And you can click on that. You can just click Deploy OpenStack. And what you'll get is a wizard that takes you through. It asks you for, well, what IP addresses do you want to use on your OpenStack clu cluster, et cetera? What compute clusters do you want to use for OpenStack capacity? And then it deploys the entire OpenStack control plane as virtual machines in a scale-out, highly available way. So then your end developers just get a Horizon GUI or the CLI tools and can use them just the same way they'd use any OpenStack distribution. Remember, your cloud tenants just get those standard OpenStack tools. But because they're running on rich technologies like NSX, 
they can create rich multi-tier applications very easily. At the same time, you as an operator of the infrastructure get to use those VMware tools. So we've added, for example, OpenStack awareness to the vSphere client, so you can search on OpenStack tenant names and immediately see the VMs that are relevant to them. This is vCenter operations. I mentioned the relationships between OpenStack objects and the underlying infrastructure. This is an NSX troubleshooting tool if you're having network connectivity problems. This is Log Insight, again, that log collection, aggregation, data analysis platform that has built in OpenStack integration as well. So again, we have a full deep dive demo that actually talks you through each one of those examples, and I strongly encourage you to, to, to check it out. But hopefully that was just a little something to give you a bit of a visual idea of, of what we've been doing. So, um, you know, this product is now in beta. It'll go GA early next year. Um, this is the link if you want to go learn more about the product or sign up for the beta. I will caution you, we've had an unbelievable number of people requesting <laughs> access to the beta. So we, um, we, we really aren't able to fulfill uh, and, and, and respond to everyone. But we are particularly prioritizing people who have a near-term production plans around OpenStack. Uh, so, so if you have that, please, uh, please uh, um, let us know that you're interested in the beta, and um, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to follow up with you soon. So one other topic I wanted to, to, to touch on is sometimes people say, OK, great. I've got it. You've got this platform. It makes it really easy to use OpenStack on VMware technologies. I can get, get my developers OpenStack at production quality very quickly. But everything you've said so far is about VMware and running on VMware hypervisors. Does that mean I'll never, ever have the ability to run on another platform like KVM? And the answer is no. You will still always be able to run additional technologies. Now, VMware will not directly provide commercial support for those technologies. You'll work with our partners in terms of you know, someone who delivers and provides support for KVM. But what I'll show you here is a way that you can make them work together really nicely and effectively provide your team with what, what appears to be a single OpenStack cloud with two chunks of capacity. One that's an OpenStack chunk of capacity, or sorry, one that's a VMware, an OpenStack chunk of capacity, and one that's OpenStack on, for example, KVM or Hyper-V. So to show that in a little more detail, you know, if you just deployed VMware integrated OpenStack, this is what you'd have. You'd have VMware integrated OpenStack with the standard OpenStack APIs that your developers interact with. But what you can also deploy OpenStack from some other vendor using some other hypervisor. And again, as long as that vendor supports the standard OpenStack APIs, right, what you can actually do is federate Keystone and use the same identity server across these two clouds. So your, so your end users only have one set of credentials, can log in once. And you can actually even use a shared horizon portal. So there's only one portal they need to go to to provision. So let me show you a quick demo that we put together on this. This is just using a little POC environment. You'll see from the size of the hypervisors, but gives you an idea. So here you are logging into the VMware integrated OpenStack console. And as you expect, you log in there and you see the same standard OpenStack uh, uh, dashboards. And you can look at your, um, your hypervisors. And here we see we have one cluster of VMware capacity with 32 CPUs and about 250 gigs of RAM. Again, this is all standard VMware integrated OpenStack that you would see. I can click on instances and see that I've got a bunch of instances spun up and they've landed on that, that VMware cluster. So this is where it gets interesting. So what I can do is I can go up to the top and actually select a region. I can go and I can choose, oh, well, this cloud also is running a KVM region. And so if I click on that, again, using the same user credentials, the same portal, I can then look at my capacity in the KVM region. I can see that I've got another VM with the same image um, running. But if I go and look at the hypervisors, this, this hypervisor is actually of type QMU, which is you know, the, the KVM uh, a hypervisor type. So again, what this shows is as long as, as what you're using are, uh, is, a, is an OpenStack solution, whether you did it yourself, whether you bought it from a vendor that uses standard OpenStack APIs, you can actually use tools like VMware integrated OpenStack and use them in a very, you know, right alongside 
tools from other OpenStack vendors in a way that's, that's, that's still quite seamless for your end developers. Because at the end of the day, that's what really matters, right? You want to make sure that your developers get a consistent set of APIs and tools to deploy and manage their workloads. So um, before we wrap up, I just want to talk a little bit. People often ask me, OK, well, where's this going? What's next uh, for VMware Integrated OpenStack? And uh, you know, there's three different areas where our, you know there's three different areas in terms of how I think about our roadmap. So the first is how we interact with the OpenStack community. As I mentioned, we continue to um, improve and integrate um, our technologies into OpenStack. We continue to add new things from a community perspective, like Congress or you know new APIs and Neutron. And with each OpenStack release that comes out, we'll we'll offer a new version of VMware Integrated OpenStack that corresponds to that upstream OpenStack release. You know, after we've had time to harden and test and validate uh, the, the OpenStack release. In addition to OpenStack releases, right, there's, there's new releases of VMware technology all the time. vSphere 6 is coming out um, early next year. It's going to have a bunch of really cool new features. Well, we want to make sure that you can leverage those really cool new features like virtual volumes and fault tolerance and long distance vMotion in an OpenStack context. So that means we're improving the drivers, adding support for these new VMware features in vSphere, in NSX. You've heard about what we're doing with Evo Rack, which is a new converged infrastructure play. Right? We'll, we'll be looking at adding support for OpenStack, for VMware integrated OpenStack with Evo Rack. And the third area, and it's very important to VMware, right, is our partners. Right? We're continuing to make sure that, that all the work our partners have done to integrate with the vSphere platform is work that, they can, that can be leveraged within VMware integrated OpenStack. I talked a lot about storage partners earlier. But there's also networking partners, um, like Palo Alto Networks, uh, Arista, F5, making sure that you can use their technologies inside of OpenStack and VMware. People like Pivotal, who we're obviously very close with, and we, we, you know, we work closely with to make sure that their Cloud Foundry can work well on top of VMware environments. And there's other OpenStack partners, like Canonical, Maranta, Sousa, Red Hat, <coughs> HP. In that scenario, we just talked about making sure that their OpenStack distributions and work well alongside and with VMware technologies. So with that, um, I'll wrap up and I'll take questions. Just a couple things to call out on this slide. So obviously all of these sessions are done by now, but the foundation is great. They put all the videos up online. So um, I'd encourage you to check them out, especially if you're, if you're kind of intrigued by that short demo we gave. The second one um, on, on the Tuesday slot, the VMware Integrated OpenStack Technical Deep Dive. It's a really great full deep walkthrough. It's all showing you know, real operations on the system. You'll get a very good idea of what it means to install VMware Integrated OpenStack and use these management tools with it. Um, there's also, um, obviously we still we have a booth here. There's a page up there. If you have questions, you can ask um, just any questions about how VMware works with OpenStack. That's a VMware community. Um, if you've heard of hands-on labs, these are labs, um, VDI environments that you can get with a couple clicks of a button online. And we have a full lab that shows you how OpenStack and VMware works together. This is uh, so if you go to vmware.com slash go slash OpenStack lab, you can check that out. That shows um, both how OpenStack works with vSphere and works with NSX. So great way to spend, you know, hour or more um, just kind of really getting hands on with the technology. And then again, just as a reminder, if you're interested in the VMware integrated OpenStack product or beta, uh, that's the link below. And the last thing is just we're always we're hiring. We're hiring great engineers, product people, et cetera. So if what I set up here is intriguing to you and you might want to be a part of that team, I'm happy to talk to you about that afterward. Otherwise, uh, thanks, and I'll happily take some questions. Mm -hmm. So to understand value versus OpenStack API, right? that's a key thing. Well, it's, it's, it's that, that's the best way to sum it up. But I mean, it's, it's obviously it's OpenStack APIs and the tooling and the ecosystem around it. So the vCloud APIs are a different set of cloud APIs than this. They're, um, you know, I, I think the value of the OpenStack API is it's a vendor, or sorry, it's a vendor neutral kind of industry wide set of APIs. That's value number one, and value number two is that these OpenStack APIs are more modeled on something like Amazon or these kind of more traditional cloud native abstractions. And what what we find is that a lot of times developers find those a little more intuitive, a little more simple. So, you know, at the end of the day. OpenStack and VMware, it's a lot about customer choice, right? We have all kinds of customers from 
tiny SMBs to, you know, um, you know, massive, massive, you know, technology companies. And we've heard from enough of our customers that these APIs are something different and useful and something that they want to leverage with VMware technologies. And so that's why we're working to enable them. I had a question. Sorry, yeah. Um, so how different is the beta from, is it like based on IceHouse, do you know? How easy would it be for someone to deploy taking the upstream code and driving and vCenter or ESX? So it all depends on your skill set, right? Um, you know, VMware integrated OpenStack will be the easiest way, I can promise you that, but it's the trade-off is really with flexibility, right? If you want to get in the guts and tweak the code or change every little configuration option out there, that's not something you can do with a product like VMware integrated OpenStack. So you really need to think about that kind of trade-off and what you're looking for. But there's, you know, we contribute the code upstream. We have upstream documentation that you can follow in terms of how you want to, if you want to get the bits yourself and deploy OpenStack with vSphere, if that's the model you want to do, that's great. We've got customers who are successful with that. And is it based on, uh, so this product is- Yeah, VMware integrated Ice OpenStack, the current version is based on IceHouse. Okay, thanks. Good question. Open vSwitch on ESXi clusters. Um, I think there's a couple models for that. I think the, the model the community is looking at right now is actually running a virtual appliance potentially. On top of it, that's, that's a very simple model. The reality is porting all of Open vSwitch to, um, to, the, to the vSphere platform is not a, not a simple task at all. And in fact, in a lot of ways, it's incompatible with existing switching modeling and capabilities. So it would break a lot of our partner integrations as well. So the easiest way to think about it is that it's something you can actually layer on top. So it is like a uh, software L2 gateway or something? L2 gateway? Yeah. I mean, you could run it as a virtual appliance. Right? A lot of partner technologies run as a virtual appliance on top. It's much easier than having them directly integrate into the kernel. Are there any other questions? All right, thanks a lot.